guys, welcome back to the channel. And today I've got a vlog that was actually requested by one of my fan pages. It is a vlog on how to ride and what I do when I ride, because on a lot of my videos, I get lots of questions and people asking for tips on how to see your canter or what you can do to get your horse into an outline and just yeah, like general top tips and stuff and like how to get your heels down. Um, and I'm just gonna be talking you guys through what I do when I ride and why I do it basically. Um, but I'm gonna be, Rolo's going to be my lovely little model um got like the little cheekiest one here today i've been so fortunate and lucky to have a lot of lessons with some amazing riders and i've picked up a lot of tips from them along the way so i'm gonna try and tell some tell you guys some of the tips that they've taught me um because it's definitely made me lessons definitely made me improve so much and i'm really hoping that i can help you guys out today and um, but obviously i'm not a qualified instructor so don't like take this off my word this is just what i do should we start by getting on so rollo is a little bit funny when i get on he's a little bit funky so when i get on he likes to swing his bum round and it's not because he doesn't look forward to doing work or anything he absolutely loves being ridden rollo what he likes to do is he likes to play this game and it's basically like sometimes he will refuse to move he like plants and he'll basically just swing his bum round but what i do is i get my mountain block into the corner and it's open both ways, so he's not going to get stuck or anything. And I just line him up so he can't swing his bum around. Because what he does is I'll show you what he does. So if I line him up to get on here, then I go to get on. Hold on, he's not doing it. Hold on. Really, you got to play out for his side grips. <laughs> I know. And I've taught you not to do this, but come on. So I'll, I'll go to get on him. And then oh, he's not doing it. But normally what he'd do, yep, yeah, this is this is it. This is it. This is it. And it's basically, he likes to do this. And no matter how many times I will lead him up, he will do it over and over and over again. I normally take treats with me on my ride as well. Good thing. Sniff the treats, okay. And once they've sniffed the tree, they will do anything. Come on. Come here. And Rolo is very food orientated as well. Right, that's gonna be close enough. Okay, right, you can get the treat once and one. Okay, right, come on. Come on, you got to walk on. I know your games. You're going to take the treat and then run. <sighs> there we go. And then he likes to just like reverse out, you know. There we go. When I get on, I first of all, I want to check the girth. That is hanging. You can actually see a gap. And it sh they should always be even on both sides. So I always like to check what they are on both sides. So they're both on two on each side. So I'm just going to make, make it one to three on each side. Nice rounded number. Because Rollo's got a lot of mane, I like to make a little like a gap in his mane. And I like to have like all of his mane going over the reins as well. Um, but I have my reins like this. I have three under the rein. Then I put my pinky to secure the rein. Then I have my thumb on top of the rein. So three, three fingers under the rein. Pinky, secure the rein, and then the thumb on top of the rein. And if you want to like, stop your reins from like sliding through your fingers, you've got to keep your thumb on top. Your thumb is like a brake kind of thing. So if you're driving a car, your thumb is your brake. Um, because if you don't have that, then your reins are just going to slide. He's a, little bit, he's a little bit distracted. He's looking to the fields. But we just started, so he can have a little look. I don't want to have his head down all the time. When I first get on, I like to have my reins a little bit shorter and just like walk around the edge of the arena and especially if it's in a new place um i like to just have my reins a little bit shorter and then walk around the edge of the arena and then once i've done that i'll then start like stretching and stuff um because i always feel like when you stretch first it always puts in a better mindset um and i stretch before and after like my session so he's having a little nose and then now he's had a little look round, I'll give him a bit more rain and then just ask, I'll open my hands a bit, a little bit more and then I'll just send little vibrations, like little signals. I'll like sponge with my hand a bit um, and I'll have one hand like a bit to my, towards my knee and then that, that'll be my inside hand. And then what I like to do with Rolo, because he likes to look to the outside a bit, is I just have my inside hand always just sending little soft like vibrations and I like to give him release with my rein. So once he's gone down, then I'll just like release with my hand a bit, like always giving him rep positive rewards. And then again, to make him nice and 
nice and loose through his neck. And then I'm just asking him to relax and stretch in his neck and throughout his body. And there, he's just looking a little bit to the outside and I want to have my all of his focus onto me and onto my voice as well. Not just like through my hands, I, I like to have his focus on my voice as well. And you can tell when they're doing that because they've always got one ear kind of like half turned towards you. And sometimes when I do that, I'll just say like, Rolo. And then sometimes one of his ears will come back and that's how I know that he's listening to me. I like to walk for about five minutes really to get them all warmed up. And yeah, just always thinking about where you're going and not always looking down all the time. And sometimes I do click a little bit too much, but I don't really know I'm doing it. So there's some habits that I do have that aren't that good, but some of them I've got rid of. Um, and when I do clicking, that's my, that's my worst habit. I'm also screwing my heels up a little bit. I do that. But sometimes I literally just don't realise I'm doing it. And we're all human at the end of the day. So, yeah. We've been walking for about 10 minutes now because I've been talking as well, so it's been a bit longer. So I'm going to think about trot now and I still like to stretch him in the trot, but I'm just going to shorten my reins up a tiny little bit because you're a bit more vulnerable in the trot. Um, and then before I go into trot, I'm going to get a nice stretchy walk and then make it a little bit more forward. And then when I, when I go into trot, I like to have my head up, but like look down a tiny bit at his like ears, if you get what I mean. So I like to have my head up, but look down at his ears a little bit. Then give him a little kick, just a little like squeeze with my lower leg. And then everything should happen. And I do stretching every single session with him. So he's pretty used to it now. But if your pony does drift in a bit and they're not staying on the track, then you should do like a little bit of leg yielding. So come off the track, then use your inside leg and just like squeeze it. And then like open your hand and then like leg yield over. And what I might get with Rolo now, I've got the whip. It's a bit of a tense trot. Um, and where, it's just where he goes a bit like a little bit of a sewing machine. He gets some really fast, like little legs. Um, but I just manage that by stretching him a bit and just like, just kind of forgetting that the whip's there, you know? And when I do that, he like softens. So it's not too bad, but he's just a little bit tense and he wants to dash off a little bit. So I'm just going to open my inside hand a bit. I still have my outside leg on. And there we go, that's a nice trot. A little bit forward, but everything will come. I'm going to slow my rise a little bit because that always helps. So here he's softening up a little bit. And there's some ponies being brought in for the field, so it's all exciting. But I just got to remind him. Brella. See, the, see when I said his name, Frello, his, his ears like come back onto me. So it's because he's listening to everything I'm saying. And also one of the things that me and Rolo do together that works is when I say, whoa, he comes back. So I'll be like, ooh, and then, he's, and then he slows down, ooh. And it helps a lot as well. Like when you're out and about like doing a show or something and they're being like a bit strong, you've always got that, that little bit of reassurance. And there is ears are just on the horse because they're pointing that direction. Ooh, yeah. And when I'm riding, I want to make sure I'm sat really tall and my shoulders are back. And here he's just getting a little bit tense because there's some stuff going on outside of the arena, but I just got to really get his attention back onto me again. And there, good boy. And then when he does soften into a stretch, give with my rein and pat him and tell him he's a good boy. Ooh, just getting a bit fast. Ooh. And another really good thing is circles. Circles are going to be your best friend if you're riding a speedy pony and like spiraling in and out as well. Ooh. They're going to be really good because they're just going to make you like, and you can get your certa, so I'll show you what's, I'll show you what spiraling in is. So it's basically just making your circle smaller and smaller. So here I'm just coming off the track a little bit and then 
I'll come in a little bit more. And then I'll just keep on like spiraling in and then in and then in. And then you see how he's softened already. It's because I'm also giving him something to think about. Ooh. And if you're riding a fast pony as well, they're going to have to slow down. Then I'll start spiraling out again. They're going to have to slow down a little bit because they're doing some circles. So now I'm just spiraling out. And then if he starts to get a bit fast, I'll just spiral in again. Good boy. So here he's really nice. I'm just going to give him with the rain a bit. Good boy. Good boy. Oop. And then just keep his focus on me the whole entire time. Really. And then there his ears come back to me. Really. Really. Ooh. So when I click, sometimes I'm not clicking for him to go forward. I'm clicking to get his attention back on me. Ooh. So now I'm going to tell you like what I do to help me with my rising. So like when I do my rising trot, what I try to do is it's really hard to rise properly when you've got like a really slow trot. So what I like to do is if they're like being a little bit lazy, I like to just encourage them forward as much as I can. Um, because then if, if they're rising, if they're basically, so if they're trotting really, really slow, it's always going to be a lot harder to rise. Um, and when they're trotting fast, it's going to be hard. But when they've got a nice working trot that's in a rhythm, you're going to get the perfect rise then. So I'm going to ask him for trot. And he knows I'm going to do this because he's already sussed me out and he's heard me say it. I tend to just have my feet, whoop. I have my feet in a nice, like, I don't have them too far down like that because I tend to, it gives me really sore pain all the way down my foot and my calf. Um, and it also isn't like good for you if you're having your heels down like this all the time. So I like to just have my feet like not on 180 degrees, a little bit lower. So I like to have them a bit like this. And when I'm rising, I push into my feet a little bit more, but you should always be using like, you've got your stirrups there for a reason basically. So don't try and like grip with your knee like on the saddle, cause it's always gonna be hard. So use your stirrups cause they're there for a reason, but also don't have your knees like really, really far from your saddle flap. So you want them to be, so even in the walk, you want to have, and this is good for the canter as well, you want to have nice loose hips. When I mean have loose hips, I don't mean just like bounce up and down basically. I mean have, make your bum go in the motion, but then, and your, and your hips make them be loose. So don't have a really tense body. Don't have like your bum going with it and then have a really tense upper half. Almost relax a bit. Just like, <sighs> when you're in your trot, um, and you're doing your rising, it needs to be supple and, supple and soft. You can't be like rising up really quickly and then like coming smashing, like crashing down on the saddle because that's their back, it's gonna hurt. So you're gonna have to come up and then slowly sit back down. And I know when you're on like a, a smaller pony, they've got small, smaller strides. So it's gonna be harder, but you just always gotta think fairy vibes. You know, soft, airy, flowy. You've got to feel light in the saddle, basically. You can't be like one big sack of potatoes. You have to be light on their back. Almost think like you're levitating off the ground kind of thing. So we're going to shorten up a little bit now. And when I ask for trot, because Rolo's is really good, I just kind of take my leg, my calves. So like this little bit. I, I take my feet off the side of his rib cage and then just like soften him, up, soften him up. So like keep my outside rein stiff, not stiff, but like firm. And then like sponge with my inside rein. Really. And then he goes. And also if I try and rise whilst I'm leaning forward on the saddle, I'm always gonna, I'm always gonna create like a bit of like a head motion. That's gonna look a bit not good. And if you go like Shrek, this, and you'll be like, like this basically. And it's not gonna be nice for your pony because the roller's like, what on earth is she doing? So you've just gotta sit tall, sit back, and then it will just look so much better. And you can't lean back too much either. 
you just want to be using your core and sitting up basically um, but now he's pretty warmed up in the trot so we're gonna have a little canter now and when I when I know I'm ready for a canter I've done a good 10 minutes on each rein sometimes less some maybe more but not around 10 minutes you want to do about that much for the showing and dressage example you want to have your hands up but if you're just like you just want to have a nice ride you can have your hands a bit lower down but don't have them like pinned down here because otherwise their head is going to be like screwed in basically and they'll be over bent so you want to have your hands nice and light i'll put my outside leg back only a tiny bit behind the girth and then i'll sit deep i'll look up hands high and head high so three and then there we go and then sometimes what really does is he like drifts out so i just get a bit a tiny bit more of a shorter outside rein and keep my outside leg on and then so this is what i mean so have your bum like ooh, like your bum needs to like go in the motion of their canter then your hips so like this part of your body round here that should be a bit looser and then your upper half can be ooh, a bit more like your shoulders should be back a bit more ooh. so when you do your canter obviously if you try and grip with your calves it's going to make it so much harder and if you try and grip with your knees that's probably going to make it harder you don't want to grip with your your lower leg this is what only works for me so i never really grip with my lower leg i grip with my bum i think it's a bit weird and then the rest of my leg will just it will be there it, it, it it's it should always be touching the saddle basically and your knee should be against the flap you don't want your knees out here and then your toes all the way back here and then this is what farmer feet farmer feet you don't want farmer feet it ain't, it ain't attractive and then you don't want elbows we don't like chicken elbows and think about don't be a farmer don't be a chicken you want to keep your you don't want to have your elbows like this there because you're sticking your chest out you want to have a nice a straight body this one needs to be soft this one needs to be soft and then your leg needs to be soft and relaxed and if you've already got a good upper body your leg will naturally be kind of good but don't get me wrong guys when you start riding you're gonna not look neat and tidy and you're not gonna be absolutely perfect because no one is no one's absolutely perfect and if they are they're a miracle everyone starts from somewhere and everyone was bad at some point so just think about that basically um and i do feel like once you've mastered well not mastered it once you've got your seat good and you're like going with the saddle what i like to do is just take your stirrups away and like do two or three sessions without your stirrups because then you have to learn to sit this sit the counter because you've got no choice you can't be gripping on with no knees then because all of your like bad habits will just they'll just fly away there we go like if you grip your knees and sometimes during a session i'll just like if i feel like i'm not my legs a little bit bad or something or my core's not good i'll just take my stirrup i'll just take my feet out of the stirrups i'll just go without the stirrups for the rest of the lesson and you don't need to take them off i mean you can do but i tend to just leave them on because i can't really be able to take them off um but now i'm going to do oh this trot's very bouncy and then just like this Whoop. Then here, you're a bit vulnerable. You want to like grip your knee then. But no, you can't. You can't just grip with your knee. And you want, you you have the feeling to like grip with your thigh, but you, you don't want to do that because then you'll get like a sore thigh. Whoop. You want to just have a good, nice canter. So this is good. Give. So once you've like pretty much mastered your trot your walk your canter and you've done all of that and now you're ready to start asking for the contact for the outline which is basically where where they like come into a bit of a, a nicer head shape basically where they arch their neck um, and Rolo's really really good at this put my inside leg on a bit use my inside rein and outside rein but different times like that and then he'll come into an outline and even though he's very good at this now, when we first bought him, I could not get him into an outline for a good few months, which was 
pretty frustrating because we were we had loads of lessons we had lessons like twice a week and it just wasn't really helping but now we've mastered it and we're really really good at it and you want to have your hands even so you want to have your reins nice and even you don't want to have one like there whilst you're going around you want to have them nice and even and you want to have your reins not twisted as well so like this and then you want to with Rolo, what I do is I just like have my reins like this, put my inside leg on or my outside leg on. Well, I'm like not, I'm not, I'm not on the rein at the moment. I'm standing in the middle of school. So put one of my legs on and then Rolo just comes into a nice outline. And then once he's in an outline, sometimes I will just give with my reins. So he's got some self-carriage, which is so where they're not pulling on the bit to like stay in the outline because sometimes they can do that. But Rolo is quite good with self-carriage. And when they've got a foamy mouth like this, it's a really good sign of accepting the bit and having a good time. Also, they will have a foamy mouth if you give them a treat, but I'm gonna give her a little treat now. She's been a very, very good boy. Um, and that's a good thing as well. If you had a really good session or like during your session or like whatever, I like to just like give them a little treat just to re reward them and have something for them to look forward to. But um, if, you're, if your ponies like Rolo and they will keep on begging for treats like this and they think they can um, turn around and if they like start spinning around like, like a dog chasing its tail, they will start turning around for the treat. But I'm going to do a little bit of outline work now so you guys can see what I'm doing. But it's always nice to, when you're standing, to get a little bit of an outline. But you can do it and walk too. It's a little bit lazy now. Come on, darling. I like to have my outside rein a little bit firmer. I don't want to keep on like giving and releasing with it. Um, but I like to have my inside rein just squeezing, squeezing on the bit. And then. I like to have my hands nice and high, but not like, not like up here, if you get what I mean. So like, nice like this and then I like to have the little bit of inside bend and when we first got Rolo what I did which helped me like get him into the outline was I used to get, bend him to the inside on a circle and then I will change the rein and bend him onto a different circle you always want to have them slightly looking in anyways not too much but just ever so slightly so you can always see a little bit of their eye and their eyelashes. With the roller, it's a little bit harder because it's got a lot of forward lock, so I kind of just have to... I've got to the point now where I can feel when he's in the right position because his mane's so much over his eye, I can't really see. So I just kind of feel it now. And then there, he's, he's done it. So I release with my inside rein and give him a pat. And then here we go. Good boy. And then he'll start to just get the memo that when he's doing the right thing, he gets rewarded. And that's something that's really good because then they um, have something to like be happy with and have something to look forward to. And when ponies, they're a bit like, when they try really hard, they're always looking for something when they get it right, when they have a reward. So if your pony's a little bit tricky and then they've done something right and then you didn't reward them, sometimes they don't know that they've just done the right thing. And also the little pat on the inside, it really helps soften the contact um, and it really helps Rolo as well. So like if he's a bit tense um, and in the ring and he's just like been like gone down his head into an outline, I'll give him a pat and then throughout the rest of my show he'll do the right thing because he knows that he's just done something good. Good boy. And it always helps as well, like if you take your leg on and off, that also helps too. Ooh. There we go. And when they've gone from trot down to walk you want to when this once they're in walk again you want to have a really nice active walk because if you're still going to do some stuff you don't want to like be like ah you're finished you don't want to like lie to them and also it's quite a bad habit because if you like get like give them loads of rain after they're done with every single trot it can, they can get in a bad habit and just like start doing a really sluggish walk um because they think they're finished every single time um but yeah I might, I might like one run through some walk decanters now, okay. um, and then we'll finish there, and I'll do some stretching. But yeah, now with the walk decanters, they're quite difficult. But they, 
they you think they're difficult, but they're really not. You just have to think canter, but in walk basically. So you wanna act like you're just be in walk and then think canter kind of thing. Um, and I remember when I was trying to do this for the first time on popcorn and it took a little while for him to like get what I was asking because my legs couldn't like quite go past the saddle flap. They were like here. Um, but you, you just want to make the signals clear and you also need to have nailed all of your other transitions before you start thinking about walk to canter because it can like interfere with some of your other transitions too. So we're going to do walk to canter now. I'll come off the track. So you can see my outside leg. I'm going to ask for walk to canter so you can see it. So I'll have a lot, a bit of inside bend, not too much. Then I'll just slide my outside leg back and then click twice. And then that's what I do with all of my ponies. So when I ask for walk to canter, I click twice and then they just know, yep, yeah, canter. Um, and all of my ponies know walk to canter. Whoop. Because it's just a nice thing to teach them as well. And especially with the showing too. For some of my junior classes, I like to do it in that. Whoop. And when I started like doing my walk to canter on popcorn, I like leant forward, like I leant to my inside. And because I was like, oh yeah, you're on the right leg. Yeah, no, I can't see. So you just have to think. You can almost know, you can feel when they're on the right leg or not. And we're going to ask for walk to canter again. So I'll just shorten him up a little bit. Okay, a little bit of inside bend. And really knows when we're going to do this now because, right. And then you just, good boy. And it's just my outside leg that comes back. My inside one stays the same. Ooh. So here he's getting a little bit strong, a little bit tense. So I just roll him. Ooh. And then he relaxes. Ooh, steady. Ooh. And ooh, trotting. So now I'm going to finish it off with diagonals and canter leads. So for your, I'll do some canter leads first because we're like in the canter mindset. So, so that inside leg, so Rolo's one that's like going like this, that's his inside leg and that should be coming forward on each rein. So when you're on the right rein, because I'm on the right one. When you ask for canter, your outside leg goes back, inside leg stays the same, you sit up, and then you have a little bit of inside bend, because if you've got no inside bend, ooh, then you're probably gonna go on the wrong leg. So, and like for my showing as well, sometimes I have like set shows, and I remember one of the set shows that the judge gave me was, canter on a straight and luckily me and Rolo are quite good at these but you've got to have a lot of inside bend and you've got to have your signals very very clear most of the time and this is like a, the best way to do it is to ask for the canter on the corner um, but I'm going to show you how to do it on the straight if you ever need to do this for some reason um, but it's basically the same thing, you do all the same movements, you just have a bit more inside bend. So I'm gonna canter. So I'm gonna get my inside bend prepared now. And then, there we go. Good boy. Oh, we've got a pole. Jazz up the lesson. Good boy. So now I'm going to tell you guys about the diagonals and this will, it's to say if you're doing a dressage test, this will always like help your scores and for showing as well. Um, so yeah, this is going to basically be a life skill and something good to know. So once you know it, it's basically like, you know it for life. It's basically like riding a bike. Um, it's when their outside leg goes forward it's quite hard to explain so it's when that outside leg goes forward and this took me ages to learn I swear I basically had it at one point and then I completely like I don't know what happened but I completely forgot it again 
but now I know it and I know it really, really well. And I can tell it on like any pony or horse now. Ready? what are you doing? So there, it's only the front legs you want to be concentrating about. So this leg, this one here. Oh, don't bite my fingers. So this is the wrong diagonal. And it's where his, it's quite hard on him because his strides are very short. Now that's the right. So it's when his outside leg's going forward. Or you can do it when his inside leg's going back. But I feel like when I tried to learn it when that went that way, it was a lot more confusing. So when his outside leg is stretched out forward, I need to be rising up. So when it's out, I should already be up. And when it's out and I'm down, I need to sit for two or rise for two and then I'll be on the right diagonal. So yeah, I think we've covered everything. I need to do a bit of stretching now. I found the diagonals really hard to learn, but all it is is just practice, 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 practice. Um, and then you'll eventually get it. My mum did ask me like every single like time I rode, are you on the right diagonal? No, you're not, change it. And like, she asked me that like 50 times every single lesson. And I was just like made to learn it basically in the end. I had no choice because mum would ask me every single lesson about 20,000 times. Um, so if you've got like someone watching you, just like get them to keep on asking you. And then that's a good way to learn it as well. In the end, you will get it, guys. Um, it just takes others longer than some. But yeah, that is it. I'm going to do a bit of stretching now. I really hope you guys have enjoyed today's vlog and you found this really, really helpful. Oh, you dropped the treat. I will get back on him because he needs to do some stretching. Um, but I hope you guys found this useful and that you've learned some stuff from it. Um, but yeah, this was quite requested um, and I always get lots of questions asking and tips and tricks. So hopefully I've covered everything. Rolo was such a good boy being our little dream model. You're a very, very good boy. Um, just displaying all the moves. Thank you for watching today's vlog, guys. And I'll see you tomorrow for another vlog, miss. Bye.